and invited me to be a lecturer for the Tombaugh uh, Club meeting. And I checked the list of previous lecturers, and it's an impressive list of people and a lot of interesting subjects. I'm honored to have the opportunity to be a presenter and be added to the list of the Tombaugh lecture series. So I'm going to dive into the partial phase phenomena now. And these are all the things that are related to the sun being slowly covered by the moon. And some are unique to eclipses. So the temperature is easy in eclipse. I mean, it just makes sense. It corresponds with the percentage of obscuration. There's a decrease in energy delivery to the earth. So the temperature goes down. The temperature doesn't have to be the lowest during totality. It can actually drop a little bit more after C3. And then there'll be a recovery delay. The temperature doesn't go immediately up because the earth has to start to reabsorb radiant energy. All of the energy that comes through the sun travels through space, but about 50% of it gets either absorbed or reflected by the atmosphere. So only about 50% of it is what gets absorbed by the earth to change our ambient temperature at ground level and affect uh, weather. And it's a fun thing to do to take temperature at the partial phases. And students can do it just with a scientific grade uh, liquid uh, thermometer. You can do it with a data, an electronic thermometer or, or a data logger, as long as it's based on a probe. I've done it in two eclipses with this device called the Thermocron I button, which you program with a computer to turn on during eclipse time, take data, and then shut off. And then don't make the mistake I made in 2017, which is this picture right here. My I button wouldn't work in 17. I didn't have enough time to get a new one. So I bought, quickly went out and bought a, a data logger. And the mistake here is this data logger has too much thermal mass. So the little sensor that's in the top doesn't have enough time to respond to the changes of the eclipse uh, temperature changes because there's so much heat um, uh, you know, retained by the mass of the, of the device. So that's a mistake. You have to do something with a low thermal mass. So if you want to take temperature readings, um, mount your device or what you're logging at about chest high, shade it from the sun with tin foil. If it's a warm climate, shade, shade it from the ground to block reflected energy up from the ground. Allow air circulation behind it because you're trying to monitor the ambient temperature of the air and pick a device with low thermal mass. And so you can have students or, or kids plot the eclipse. They can take a temperature about every five minutes, have them plot temperature versus time, uh, write down the contact times. And the data they're trying to get is what is the maximum temperature drop and what is the temperature recovery lag, the time it takes to start rising again. When I took temperatures in 2019 in Argentina with an I button, I I documented an incredible decrease in temperature, which was 26.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really unusual. Usually the temperature will be, the drop will be between 10 and 15 degrees. But I don't want you to look sight, uh, lose sight of the fact that this temperature monitoring means a lot because it's actually a representation of the changing thermodynamics at, at your eclipse site. The partial phases are becoming this gigantic dimmer switch that is dimming all of the electromagnetic energy that's reaching Earth. 